Uh, well, hello everyone. Uh, I'm not Oscar. Uh, I'm Andrew. Uh, Oscar is taking an exam today, so uh, me and Colton are going to be teaching. Um, today we're going to be going over some more CAD training. We're going to highlight some assembly stuff and also go over like form tool and a couple other fun stuff. Um, yeah, so the first thing we're doing today is we're working on a little Lego car assembly. Um, I don't know if you guys have downloaded all of the, the files yet, but um, that would be a great time to do that because we're gonna start working on this. So yeah, I believe it's in the Slack. Yeah, uh, Oscar posted all the files in the Slack. There's also the attendance form. Uh, make sure to fill that out and uh, there might, we might also send an image through the slide for one of the other assignments. Yeah. Um, wait, is it P check? Oh, it's not out yet, but it's Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe the, the timer didn't work. Um, Hello. Hi. So, to start, we're going to go into Fusion 360. Um, just going to restart. Um, make sure you upload all the, the files from the zip folder into some kind of folder that Fusion can access. Um, when you do that, it should look like this. There's a bunch of Lego pieces in there. Um, and yeah. So basically, um, after you finish catting a lot of the time, you're going to have multiple parts that you want to put together. Um, so you put them all together visually or virtually um, in something that we like to call an assembly. Um, so in this case, it's going to be a Lego car, but if you do other CAD projects, it'll be um, a wide variety of different assemblies like robot parts or other cool things. Um, but yeah, so once you have access to all the parts, you want to make a new file and then you want to save it. So you can hold Control S or Command S depending on what kind of system you're using. Um, so I'm just going to call this Lego car assembly. And then now that you have the assembly created, you can start inserting components. So if you pull up the photo Lego buggy four, it'll kind of give you an idea of what we're making today. Um, so you just want to start by choosing a, a part. Uh, for me, I would try to choose the biggest part or the part you would kind of recognize as like the base of everything. Um, so for me, I chose the Lego 2x6. Um, so you right click the, the model and then you click insert into current design. And then 
it'll render render or it'll render the, the little Lego piece and you see it's kind of on its side and there's a bunch of little drag stuff and rotation thingies um, and you can use them to orient the Lego piece in the way you seem fit so for me I'm going to use this little rotation um, slider and I'll rotate it 90 degrees now you see it's nice and flat so I'll press OK to confirm its position. And because it's the first piece, I like to fix it in place. So if you go up here in the corner, it'll show you the part. And you can right click it again. And then there's like a little thing that says ground on the top. So you want to click that. And then that'll fix it in place. So it won't move at all when you add other components. Um, so next, if we will look at this little design, there's like a 2x4 piece that goes across the middle. So we can find that piece here, um, it's the Lego 2x4. You do the same process, you right, right click it and then insert it into your current design. And then you can rotate it again, just kind of giving like a general orientation on the part. Um, but these are not all fixed in place yet, or at least the, the 2x4 isn't. So now you want to go out, you want to go and do that. So this is when you can start fixing the components together. So if you see in the top, there's the, like the little assemble drop down, you can click it, and then there's a joint feature. And that'll help you kind of lock the pieces together. Um, so I'm just going to select this little cylinder up here, and then I'm going to I'm going to select the corresponding cylinder down here, and then you see it moves it so it overlaps. Um, and I believe you can make multiple joints. So I'm going to rotate to the bottom, click this one. Oh, wait, that's not it. <laughs> um, yeah. OK, so when we have the 2 by 4 in there, uh, what you want to do is we're actually going to move this below. Um, and when you have um, components, you have to switch the move tool sometimes to components because otherwise it just won't allow you to select them. So we're going to move it below. Then we're going to use the orbit tool and you can kind of get a better view because the joint tool needs a, you really need a good orientation to see it. Um, press escape to get out of there. Then we're going to press joint and we're going to click on one of the circles for the 2x4. Orbit our view below and then you see all those indented circles, these small ones. You want to click on that, clicking on the circle because um, joints can be very messy and if you click on a specific part, the joint will move exactly to that position. So you can't as generally just kind of click anywhere. You have to click exactly where you want it to go. Um, but then you can see we have these two jointed together. And then what we want to do is drag in one of the wheel pieces and rotate that because as, as much as joints will move to get into their correct position, uh, they can be a little uh, touchy. And if you have them orientated the wrong way, uh, it will 
kind of get joined to that area in the wrong way. So, for example, if we turn this upside down and we go over to join it with this and here, what it will do is it will move the top of that to there, um, which is not ideal. Um, so you can flip it um, with the, on the right hand side, there's a button to flip it. Um, this only works in some cases, like in this case, it didn't give me exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to undo that move. Um, And then we're going to want this below the other piece and facing upwards. And then that's my bad. Um, have it below. Um, sometimes the workspace can kind of get out of focus. So if you do the orbit tool and you click on the part you're working on, uh, it will kind of orbit it around that. And that is very useful. Um, but once you have it in a correct enough orientation, you're going to press on the area you want joined and the indent. And it has to be pretty precise, so it's good to zoom in. And boom, it will join. There are multiple types of joints you can do. Um, that's one of the very nice things about Fusion. Um, the way we have it right now is rigid. Um, but you can also do Revolute, which will turn it around the joint. Um, not really what we want for this part, uh, but uh, it's very useful, like for example, if you want to do wheels, um, there's also a slide. Uh, you can change the axes on this, and there's a bunch of them. For this one, all you need to really use is rigid though, and it will give you a little shake to show that it's selected on rigid. Um, so after this, uh, what you want to do is import the buggy wheel, and there's also the buggy tire that we want to import. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to give you some free time to import the buggy wheel in and also the buggy tire and to get those joined together.
if anyone's having um, trouble trying to find the files they uploaded, they should be under uh, admin project. And under admin project, there will be an option to upload if they aren't already in there, or they should be displayed probably around the bottom, um, or depending on how many, how many files you have in there, um, just to say, sorted by alphabetical.
I'm going to go over this uh, on the TV, so that way, uh, if you guys want, you can follow along. Also, that way it will be in the recording. Um, for the wheel, um, what you can also do, instead of importing uh, the wheel four times, removing and copying it, you can create a new file. I'm going to call it wheel assembly and then I'm going to say that import the buggy wheel center and then use the move tool rotating it 90 degrees so that it's on its side and then pressing OK and I'm going to import the Lego buggy tire going to rotate that also 90 degrees and because this is a new file and that these are the only things in there and they're both at the origin um, this is lined up right however we still want to join them together so what we're going to do is we're going to press click join um, it's also the joint tool is right up here in the bar um, and then you click on the surface of here um, so that it's all around or you can click also 
there, and then you click on the circle here, and I did miss a clip. All right. Um, zoom in, click on the circle, and then click on this circle, and then they should be joined correctly. Um, it's very buggy with how this is because when it's joining them, what it's trying to do is it's moving the two faces right up to each other. So it, it will move the point right to the other point. And that means that it's very easy to kind of get it off center or just in the wrong place. So what I like to do is I like to use kind of these circle traces because it will always go to the center of that, and that just makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to save this, user saved, and I'm going to import it into here, back into our main car assembly. I'm going to import it, move it, rotate it 90 degrees, and then the tire is a little interesting because unlike with the other sh uh, shapes, you have it's all all circle for the joints um, because you have the cylinder poking out, and then obviously the tire is circular. So what you want to do is click join, and then you do I would do any ring. I would do this one. So you see how it it lights up black. So that means that this is selected. And then if I orbit over to here, I can select the back of this. Um, and I want to choose the back because if I click on one of the circles in the front, that would uh, join it to the front, which is not what I want. Um, so in here, it only did the tire, but when you press OK, it will move the inside of the tire too. Um, one of the interesting features with moving components um, is it won't always show all the components moving. Um, that's just part of the way Fusion works. But so once you have that, you're good to go on that side. And then you can also import it again move it over to the side, uh, and then clicking on this circle that's in the XY plane, you can rotate it so that it's facing there, 90 degrees. It doesn't need to be 90. Um, it can be anywhere near 90, but it's just kind of best practice, I think, to have it lined up like that. And then you can free orbit. You're going to do the same thing on this side, only flipped and you can do join click here on the tire orbit around and then click on the highlighted part right here so the black line and then again you can see how it only shows the outside of the tire moving on the preview however as soon as i press okay um, the inside of the tire is going to move too so that is how you do the wheel assembly. Um, I'm not going to show the other side for that. I'm going to move on to the other components of it. Just if you, the, the other side of that is just the same thing, but a little bit further down. Um, next, what I'll do, though, is I will import the 2 by one uh, and rotating that 90 degrees so it's kind of parallel with the rest of it, lifting it up just so I can be able to see around, then orbiting it, you can click and that will be centered around there. I'm going to press assemble. And then there's a lot of spots on here and it, you can theoretically click on any of these, but what you want to do is click on the center and it will kind of snap to the center, so you'll you'll know when you've gotten it. And then you can go back to the main body of it. And then on here, you can also see how it kind of snaps to the center of that line. And it will 
go and snap in. And then we can press OK on that. And now we have that part attached to the buggy. Um, we do this again with the 2 by 2 roof, where you import it, rotate it, so that way studs on top are facing in the same direction as all the other studs. You can move it over here, rotate it around 180 degrees, so that way it's facing kind of the inside of the buggy where the person would sit. And then you can go to modify, uh, you can go to join, click on the center so you can see here again, it will kind of show the center of the line you want to click on. And then it will show the center of this line, it will be dark and highlighted. And then if you click those two together, um, so that rotated it, which is not exactly what I want to do, but you can, um, these can be very finicky. Um, so what I'm going to just do is just do undo and then free orbit. Going to press joint again. And it might take you a few times just because it's, it's very hard to tell um, if you've gotten the right part or not. Um, but I'm going to click right there. Okay, and then we're going to click right there. Um, now that looks out of place, but if we, nope. um, yeah, it will just be very buggy. Um, there's a lot of places to click and it, you won't always click the right one on the first or even the second try. Um, but you should be able to click it in after a while. Another way to do it, if you want, is to kind of go on the underside of it and then try from here. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is import the roof and then you also need to import the steering wheel and the um, steering wheel base right here and the gas tank. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly do that on screen and you can continue working on it now. And then probably 20-ish minutes we're going to move on, maybe a little, maybe 15 minutes.
Um, I think the most fun I'm going to still demonstrate it. space shuttle and it's like the most I can make it like ten times faster with just sketching. Yeah. That makes you nervous.
Okay, so um, I understand everyone might not be at the endpoint yet. I know there's uh, a lot of new information, and it's been a little hard with just having two, three of us. Um, but once you get to the end, and this video will be uploaded um, either tomorrow or the day after that. So if you are, if you were unable to catch it now, um, you can always go to the video and that will have the full run through through it. Um, once you have all of it assembled though, uh, what you can do uh, is you can go on and look at, and if we look at the uh, picture, there's colors for some of these. So uh, the tires are black and the uh, kind of space suit jetpack thing is red. So if you, on, on the list of components, what you can do is you can go to these and if you right click them, it will show up with appearance. And if you click on appearance, this uh, window will pop up and you have all these options. Um, and you can go down to really, uh, we're not going to grade on which appearance you choose, but I think it looks best if you go down to plastic. Um, and then any of these, I uh, translucent, glossy red, I think looks good. So you can drag it onto there, and now it will show as red. Um, you can also do this with gray for some if you want to change the color, just dragging it from here and then placing it on, side, on the component. Um, and you can do the same thing uh, for the tires, uh, dragging this on so that they change appearances. Um, but for as of right now, just because we have to um, get through two more assignments, we're going to leave that here, um, and then we're going to move on to assignment number two. Thank you. 
All right, so we're actually going to move on to assignment three right now, and then we're going to go back to assignment two later or probably next week, um, just because then we'll have our full teaching team. And right now we are very much not at our, our full teaching team because we're missing Oscar and two other leads. Um, so what I'm going to do is you're going to want to make a new design, um, save it in the top left corner, click um, fountain, and then what you're, you're going to want to do Um, so in the Slack, um, I sent out the image, it should be in general, and so what you're going to want to do is download it, and so it's a JPEG, you're going to open Fusion, and then in the top right, click Insert, and then the third option should be Insert for Canvas, and you can see how for their example, they have an uh, image of a car and kind of used as a reference for the model. Um, but you're going to insert from computer, downloads, Purdue Engineering Fountain. And then so what's, it's going to prompt you with uh, kind of three origin planes. And you're going to want to click... Any of them should work, but I'm going to choose the YZ plane. And then you're going to see when the image first comes in, it's pretty small. And we don't really want that. We want it to be a lot larger because we are trying to sketch from it. So what you can do is click on here on the corner. There's kind of a rounded edge. So right now it's set to 1, but if we set it to 10, it's going to be 10 times as large as it originally was. And then we're going to click OK. That is what we wanted. Then we're going to click on the corresponding origin plane that's with it. And you'll see now we have the image right here for us to reference. Um, and we can start sketching. And what we're going to do is we're going to start sketching with the easier lines, so just the straight lines, going to sketch the edge of the fountain. And it doesn't need to be exact. It just, 
Um, as long as you are following closely, then it should be good. And then, so there we have the start of the trace. We can also get that um, We can get that line at top. And so once we have that, what we can do is we can go to the fit points line tool. Now this should be the third option in sketch. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is click and then along the curve of the fountain, just click along. And so what it's doing is it's adding points to fit the curve to. And so the more points you add, the more kind of accurate it would be, or the closer to it would be. But we're gonna add some points. And just gonna click it back up here and then trim this bit. Um, and so then you'll see it's now kind of a light shade of blue with it, which course means that our sketch is complete and then we're going to do that again with the other trailing part of the fountain clicking along the straight edges of it um, and we're going to click right there and so once again we have the straight edges done and we can go to the fit spline and just clicking along the edge of this and as we add more points it should fit pretty well and then um so the way i do it is i just click back at the first point and that will finish it and then i just trim the edge, but then we will have our sketch. And what we can do from this is um, we can extrude this just a little bit. Um, we need five meters and we're going to do it on both sides, so there should be symmetric. And so you can click symmetric on the right side under extrusion, and you can see how it, it's gone out for five millimeters on both sides. So if I increase it, it gets wider on both sides equally as much, and then change it back to five. All we can do is pattern circular, and so we've used the circle pattern before, um, and you can also use the circle pattern with objects. I, last time we used it in Sketch. But once you have your objects selected, you can click on the axes. For us, it's gonna be just the origin, the Z axes. Um, and you will see it will, it will pop up with three and we don't really want three, we want four. So under the tab that pops up with the circular pattern, we're gonna just press up on the quantity and then we will have four. And then we can press escape to get side outside of the orbit tool and okay. And now you can see we have the four sides of it that we want. And if you want to, at this point, you can go in and then um, you can add texture to these. Um, so you can do that by sketching on these surfaces and then doing some quick lines and then going to fit point spline, going along this curve that's textured on the uh, fountain. And it won't always 
be exactly as it is in real life, but it will usually do a pretty good job at approximating it. Um, so we're just going to continue along this curve. Um, I'm going to connect it back to here and then just trim it. Um, that gave me a warning. But warning nonetheless, we have this, which we can extrude. And this will be our little bit of texture on the water fountain. We're just going to extrude it maybe 0.5 uh, millimeters. And we're going to do choose it as a new body, because if we join it, then it's going to be connected to the rest of the fountain. And what we want to do is and we want to use the circular pattern on it again. And so under create or, um, pattern and circular pattern, going to click on that. And then once again, orbiting it or doing it along here. And then we should have the texture on now for the faces. Um, you can do that on the other side repeating that to get it on uh, both faces of each pillar. Um, but after that, um, we don't really need the uh, canvas that much anymore. So what you can do is on the tab in the upper left, go to the canvas and just click on the eye and that will make it disappear. And so that way your workspace is cleaner and easier to navigate. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to give you some free time to work on this and in about 10 minutes kind of maybe give up and give an update.
high school. So we actually have to count your advice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Just cover it next week, or it may not just cover it. It may not cover it at all. Uh, so because cause the form tool is like very complex compared to everything else I've been teaching. Um, and it's been like the most difficult thing for the grasp to so just take it out entirely. Are we going to cover it at all? We're trying to decide that right now. So basically, you said that he was going to be at the week, um, but then I offered to do next week. So I, I've been rewriting the curriculum for next week. That's what I'm going to do. That's why I'm going to do next week. Yeah, that's why I, I offered because the hospital said that. Yeah. Um, not yet, but it's going to be 
Something like to have a good Um, I can't quite sure if a one. Um, but it'll let you know it's black. Okay. Like, that it's going to go
Um, so for the assignments, I'm actually going to be honest with you about that. Yeah. So I'm like, some question, but it's like, I've never seen this happen in the future. Yeah. So like some, some, they're just like bugs or errors that will just happen. So, you know, I've, I've done this movement for quite a bit. I don't, I've not been having a red. Yeah. Now I'm probably, I don't know about right after this, but I might make a video.
It's just downstairs. What? Fragments? No. No. It's just slow. Is that I really hope we can do the symposium after this program because I'm going to be like the national fair. Oh, are you going to be like Alan? Uh, no, I'm going to be fine. Man. But yeah, I yeah, know. That's why I was like, can it be after this program? You're good, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay.
to the country and try to figure out how to can communicate with her now if you want to. I would usually ask her, let's just leave like this time when there's like five people left, because at that point, um, ask her, when you have like five people left, you really only need like one. Thank you, thank you for helping me even, even if it's just I've been really bad. 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 I've